Your assistant is wonderful. <laughs> 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 you guys are getting me nervous. <laughs> I think you're getting me nervous. I'm starting to go I was meant to be the star. <laughs> okay, I'm Michael's favorite cousin. She likes me better, so whoever feels offended, sorry. I had to come out. Okay, um. She has to say that because I do her eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> Might come back with one I brought missing. <laughs> okay, 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 thanks, okay. Isol and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, um, welcome. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Check out my other videos. Link down below. I can still get very nervous and still can't see you guys. I really need to get contacts. But yeah, thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed the first two videos. That um or three videos because my sister's video has two parts. Um, hope you guys are enjoying them. Let me know what else you guys would like. Today, we're going to bring someone else to the channel. And this person... This person is also very dear to my heart. Um, we were very close when we were young. We drifted apart. Life happens, but now we're trying to build that relationship again. And I feel like it's going really good. And yeah, she's going to come here. She's going to talk about how she started off a career that she thought that she was gonna get into that this is what she wanted to persuade and then she realized that it just wasn't it okay so i um, she's gonna come here share her story hope you guys enjoy and yeah so welcome nancy to the channel yay <laughs> 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 Oh All right, so welcome to the channel, Nancy. Uh, I well, you guys seen Iso Nana before? She did come out before in one of my vlogs. But if you haven't, this is Nancy. This is my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, I know I look. She's a camera. <laughs> okay. Respect is growing for you, Iso. Oh my god. It's okay. not that easy. No, it's not. It's really not. I, you see, sometimes I like I get really nervous. I still. Applause for ISO for doing this every week, finding the courage. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Look at I like That's video. what I do when I don't know what to look at. Uh, I don't know. I guess I just improvise. <laughs> I feel like you just. I don't think we're going to get through this video without laughing. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Okay. All right, so let's start. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to cry. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> so. You started pursuing, uh, what were you going to be? Pursuing. 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 Did you guys tell me how to speak. <laughs> you started pursuing, what were you going to be, a doctor, I believe? A yes, doctor. I started to pursue a medical career. Okay, so let's go back a little bit. Okay, so who you are, like a little background about who you are. And what led to you. I don't know who I am. One day you were like, well, how old are you? Were you like 11? Were you 12? Like, okay, um, I'm going to be a doctor when I grow up. Or I'm going to do this when I grow okay. up. Or was so it influence started, people influence you to persuade that career? April 30th, 1995. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I knew. <laughs> I want to do this. I want to help other people. I saw that doctor take me out. I was like, this is who I'm going to be. <laughs> okay, no. My name is Nancy. I am 25 years old. Going on 26 this year. And I am first generation Mexican American. That just means that my parents are immigrants. So I think it's very important to mention that because mm -hmm. as immigrants, our parents came here looking for a better life because they're trying to escape the country where they come from. And so they come here looking for a better life. They have kids and they kind of project that onto their kids. And so they want a better life for their kids. And by doing that, for them, you have to go to school. You have to do well in school. You have to go to school, get your career, get a job, you're set. That's it. That is their key their road to success one straight path and so growing up i don't know i was just good at, at school i was smart i got good grades um everybody my uh, i still can attest to this my um aunts uncles my parents nancy is so smart oh my god i was always in the gifted classes okay like, they were literally specified as gifted classes was always in those classes always with high grades Sometimes I was at the top of that class, 
and everyone would just praise me. Yeah, you were such a nerd. nerd. <laughs> such a nerd. Because I remember I used to go downstairs and try to play with you. Like, no, I'm doing homework, or I'm doing this. Like, she was always doing something school. And I was like, I could never. Like, that was just right. not me. Like, how do you, like, do this? Like, I just do what it has to be done, and that's it. I mean, I guess everybody was Yeah, different. so it just came naturally. I mean, I think I kind of liked that praise. And it encouraged me. And I just want to be clear that no one, not my parents, no one ever pressured me or said, you have to become a doctor. That was completely me. And so I was like, okay, my parents want me to be successful. They want me to have a better life. They obviously, you know, I need to go to school. What's the highest possible degree you can get in school? A doctorate. Okay, whether that be a PhD, a psychologist, a dentist. Uh, no, I was like, I want to be a doctor. I love babies. I, okay, I adore babies. And so I think the easiest thing for me to pick from in my mind saying okay I gotta got become a doctor because that, that that's the way to success I'll be successful because I'm good at school and everybody loves that I'm going to school and I'm doing so well and like everybody was like no everybody would say Nancy is gonna do great things she's gonna continue school and she's gonna make it she is gonna make it and um so and I love babies so naturally I was like okay I'm gonna be a doctor and I'm gonna be a baby doctor I'm gonna be an obstetrician slash gynecologist you know it's for women's health but they help um bring life into the world you know they help um with labor and yeah i think so i, I don't know when i'm very young age probably probably in middle school i would say is when you were in middle school or was it high school i don't remember just at a young age because i i would say i want to be a doctor or be a lawyer you know those typical things mm -hmm. and i think in high school i was in brooklyn tech which is a specialized high school in brooklyn i had to take a special test for that okay to get in i got in and they have majors in this high school Okay, so it's not a typical high school where you just go to school and you get your credits or whatever. No, they had majors. So my major was law and society because I wanted to be a lawyer. I was like, I want to help people like my parents, immigrants, become citizens. I want to be a lawyer. Didn't end up liking it. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to be a doctor. I love babies. I'm going to be an obstetrician. And so, yeah, that's how. So I guess beginning, end of high school, slash beginning of college, because I had to choose my major when I got into college, and it was mm -hmm. um, biomedical engineering. Like were a pre-med track. Were you looking for colleges that, you know, was for that? Uh, yes, yeah, Stony Brook is a very it's a it's a very STEM STEM meaning science STEM meaning like science and math. Mm -hmm. So it was it's no it's a very good college. And throughout college, was you still feeling that okay, this is still my career, this is still what I want to do during those four years of college? During those four years, like, no. Obviously, like I lost I lost my way. I guess yeah, in a sense, because I really like I feel like for so long I was in school and I was praised. And I recently heard a podcast the other day, actually, about who you are. You know, like, there are different versions of you. There's who you, ident you yourself identify yourself to be as a person, and there's who others perceive you to be. Mm. You know, so I feel like, and that, how that affects you, about how you identify yourself. So I feel like... To you, it was like, others perfect, like, you're so perfect, you're doing everything sense. right. And it was like, you were meant, there was like, no failure in there like no there's like that doesn't exist in her like, like, she's gonna be successful no matter what she does because she's just quote unquote like she's perfect people put you in that pedestal yeah and i Pedest feel like about pedestal um, pedestal yeah pedestal so i feel like it took me such a long time to let that career go because i felt like that was who i was i was nancy the smart student the one who was going to continue who was going to become a doctor or professional whatever it was um, and it was like, if I let that go, who am I? You know, who, and I was so afraid to disappoint so many people. Like, I am still such a people pleaser. Like, I was, and I still am. I'm still learning how to not be that. I was just so afraid to disappoint everybody. Like, and to just be seen as, like, a failure. Like, oh, my God, no. She's one of those cases where oh, she has a bright future, or she she either gets pregnant, or she doesn't continue, or just something. Mm. You know? So I, I think that for so long... Do you I think it also has to do with the whole, like, um, you're, you're, you're the fact that you're Mexican and Mexicans are perceived, well, she gets pregnant at 15, um, they're not really, like, that successful in a sense or stuff like that. Like, does it have to do with your Mexican, like, how, the stereotype of a Mexican? That's, I've actually never thought about that. I, th I don't think that ever crossed my mind, like, oh, I'm Mexican and I have to make it for Mexicans. Uh, it was more so... Or not I like how you make it, but like how people pers like people would see you in a sense society, like oh this Mexican girl, or, you know. But um, yeah, this stop. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I just want to apologize in advance. Um, I have an animal inside my house. 
at the moment and he's making those i don't know if you guys can hear it but if you do sorry so, so being mexican um so that you wouldn't say that in the classes that because they were gifted classes mm -hmm. didn't really see any hispanics mm -hmm. like they really did not it was mostly whites and asians and a few um african-american here and there but rarely, rarely Spanish. I don't really have Spanish friends. You know, if, if I do have any Spanish friends, it's because of my boyfriend. He has Spanish mm -hmm. friends. Mm, yeah. I think it mostly were Asians. And Asians the and people whites. That... Um, I, I guess yeah. in a sense, I was proud of that too, where I was just like, I'm like the only Hispanic. You know, look at me. I'm in these gifted classes. I'm in mm -hmm. college. I'm pursuing a medical career. So I guess maybe that did play. I never thought about it, though. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, you were unique in a sense. Because you were unique with your family. And then you were unique with the people that you were around with. Because we were like, oh, a Hispanic girl. Wow, we've never seen those before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like now things are changing, though. Because things I see Tanya changing. now. And I see Tanya, like, so into her school. Like, Lynn is not like that. But she's also, like, trying to... Like, I see the generation now. Like, they're just so... They're all about school. Like, they're trying yeah. to get their career. They're trying to get their... I don't know how you see Benny. I think it's uh, Benny. because yeah, Benny. they have a lot more resources than in terms of social media. And they're just more awake. Yeah, they're, they're more... Like, I feel like they are more awake. awake. And it's like, wow, I feel like I was just sleeping. Oh, maybe it's just me. Because you aren't <laughs> sleeping. I, no, I, I better get like, you. Like, no, no, but, at the I, but, but I ended up stopping. So did I really know? So in a sense, no, I, but like you, I was sleeping because I it wasn't like... You know, like... I just kind of let myself be guided by others' perception of me. Mm, yeah, that's true. You know, so in a sense, I do feel like I was sleeping. I wasn't really awake. I'm awake now. You know? <laughs> awake. I feel awake now. Okay. So that's how you're feeling. You st so you, st you started realizing, okay, I really don't want to be a doctor when you were in college in those four years. Right? Yeah, but I felt like I just had to keep going. I was like, oh, I'm already here. Like, why would I stop? I have to, you know, like, I couldn't let that go because I was just like, I'm going to disappoint so many people. I already made it this far. I just gotta keep going. I just gotta push through. I just gotta do it. Like I said, I would do it. You know, like I can't. I didn't want to be seen as a failure. You know, I I feel like I have. I feel like I have what they call gifted kid syndrome. What is that? Is that that's it, a it's thing? A, yeah, it's essentially what it is. Is that I didn't you know that. because you were so praised as a child or doing um just well in school. You know, you're used to that praise. Mm -hmm. Whenever you do something new, that's not you in the kind norm. of expect that praise, but you also have this overwhelming sense to be exceptional at it because you're like, well, I'm just good at like almost everything. I mean, it has to come to me, you know. And if, mm. and if you're not good at it, you're just like, well, f this, you know. And I feel like that's how I am in a sense. I have a very good example with my driver's license. I had to take the test twice. I took the first time, and I didn't pass. And I was so upset about it. It took me over a year to take it again. I, like mm -hmm. I was just like, like I can't handle failure. Yeah. It's oh, kind of like wait, what I'm just like, oh, no way. And I had I took it again like over a year. It took me over a year to take it again, and I passed. Mm -hmm. But just the fact that I'm like, why did I wait so long? Like, okay, fine, you fail. So what? Just do it again. You're something in the world. Like you don't have to be good at everything. You don't. Yeah. It doesn't have to come out right the first time. You know. Mm -hmm. And and I think I don't, I don't know. I just woke up one day. I was like, I really can't continue this. Like I'm not happy. I cannot continue in this career path. Do you, um, I don't want to interrupt, but do you remember, okay, you graduated, I'm, you graduated college, and then you started to go for your master's? Yes. Right? I made it one, one semester deep <clears throat> and what, before I decided, <laughs> nope. What, and nope. can you talk about, like, what led to to that? Like, what those, like, what were you thinking one day that you just wake up and okay, like, okay, I cannot be these anyone? I, I, like, no, I like, think I, you had all I these fears, yeah. so what was it that made you... Okay, I can't. I, I did it. I can't. I just. I, it I just cannot. clicked that I felt like I was living for other people, and I was like, no, th this is not okay. I have to live for myself. I'm gonna get into this crazy debt because it's expensive. Okay, to go to continue. Like they help. They help in college, but once you go past that, it's like screw you. Mm -hmm. Find your own way to pay. We'll give you loans and give you an interest on on those loans, but find your own way. And so I felt like I I, I can't do this because. I'm only hurting myself. Like, nobody else is going to be affected by this because are these people going to help me pay for these loans? You know, no, they're not. They're not spending these long nights with me studying. And, and I was just like, no, this is this is not it. Like, this isn't and I Maybe, in a sense, I was also tired of being a good student and studying so much all the time. And I'm just like, is this ever going to end? Like, so it, it's 
it was high after high school it was four years of college and then you got to do another four years of um medical school and then after that because of the specialization i wanted to go into it was another four years of residency after that and i was just like you were just this is school. never gonna end like this is this is gonna go on forever like and ever and, and you just like when is the time fun? for me yeah i was like when is it gonna be my time to just do me i don't know yeah. like do what i want to do you know live for myself and did you like when you finally re- like, realized that how was it Telling, like, let's say your mom or your dad. She was the hardest. How did you feel when you were like, how am I going to tell my mom? I was terrified. And I remember I was very strategic about it. I, when she went to Mexico, while I was in that semester for a few days or a few weeks, I don't remember, she was not in the country. She was in Mexico. She was in Mexico. And that time that she was gone, that's when I decided to drop out, to, to, did you put finish in my the notice. semester? I finished the semester, but oh. like I put in my notice that like, I will not be returning because I was all I needed was finals. Like, well, mm-hmm. there's finals. You know, I already paid for the semester. You know, the ten grand. Why am I not gonna just finish <laughs> the semester? Ten grand a semester. Ten grand for that semester, but it was a master. It was gonna be much more expensive for medical school. So yeah, so I dropped out while she was gone. I signed like the paperwork that I told them I didn't wanna. I wasn't gonna be returning for the next semester. And even when she came back, I still didn't tell her. It took me a while. I would. I would tell her, like, oh, I don't, I think for one week, I was just like, oh, I don't need to go to, like, I'm gonna, because it was kind of all, I would need to watch videos, I only needed to go a few days for, just for life, for anatomy, like, to cut the dead body. But at that point, you already had dropped out, or I, you were just gonna finish? No, I had to clean out my locker. Oh, okay. You know, so I, I remember I went one day, and I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna go to school today, but I just went to clean out my locker. Well, I didn't actually mm-hmm. go to school, I did go to school, but just to clean out my locker, so you didn't know that I had, you know, dropped yeah. out. So that weekend, I was like, I have to tell her because like, oh, I'm just going to be at home. Like, there's nowhere that I'm going to go, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I went. I was so terrified. I just went to her room. And I, I just started crying. I couldn't even get any words out because I was so afraid. I was like, I'm going to disappoint her so much. Like, I'm, I'm such a big... I just didn't think about it. It's yeah. like, I was so afraid. But her response was the best response I could ever hope for. Like, she was... First thought I was pregnant. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that could be worse. Okay? Like, no, that, I didn't give her the worst news. That would have been the worst news for her. Okay, so at so that I, time, but look at her yeah, now. Yeah. Look at her now. At that time, not she was grandchildren, but I could wait on that. Um, I told, I, I was just like, no, and then I just went. I was like, I'm not. I'm not going. Like, I left. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. And she just listened. I was, I would cry, and she just listened. And I told her, you know, I'm not happy. It's not what I want to do. Like, I don't see this for myself. I don't, I don't want to do this. And she told me it was okay. You know, she said that she just wanted me to be happy, and and that was all. Like, she, I didn't need to continue school for make me happy. Like, it, like she was okay. Like she was very supportive. Yeah, she and you was, thought that she wasn't. You thought she was. I was. I don't know. I was just afraid. And after when she told me that, I was just like. Screw everybody else. Then what they yeah. think. If my mom can tell me that it's okay, yeah, then screw everybody. And even now to this day, she is supportive because she will send me messages that say things like, you know, it's never too late to start, or like it's okay if you start at thirty five, or or, or if, if you start and you stop and you fail and you do it again, like it's yeah. it's okay. I think what we really have to know is parents are human, and like us, they they're learning too. You know, so. For them to think that you had to go to school to be successful. I think back then when they came, that was that was true. You know, not a lot of people went to college. You know, you got you got a degree and you got a job and you were set. But now I feel like college degrees are so in abundance. Everybody's getting a college degree. Yeah, and then it's not even that. I think what they don't tell you is the fact, because it's like, okay, you're going to, you're let's say I'm pursuing to be this, this, and that. And then when you go find the job to the degree that you graduate, then they're like, okay, but where's your experience? Well, I was in school the whole time. Where was I going to get experience? Because yeah. I feel like college alone takes so much. It's hard. It, not people try to get part-time jobs just for their expenses. But where are they going to go get experience? Like, how are you going to get experience if, if you don't get me? In school, like, you have to study. You have to do yeah. work. And you have to, you know, have a part-time to pay the bills. It's tough. I feel like, yeah, I feel like for that, that's why people say do inter- internships. Uh, it's just, I feel like it's, like, a little bit more complicated now. Like, trying to actually get a job for the degree that you earned. Yeah, I, I don't regret it. Like that's one thing. Like I don't regret. It. Like there, are, there were some not backlash from family, but there were some people who would like ask me when am I going back to school. You know, like just expecting 
I mean, like, oh no, she's just taking a break or something. Like, no, this is, this is. Am I gonna go back to school eventually for something? I don't know, maybe. I never thought that I would leave in the first place. <laughs> yeah. And look, I did. Uh, I could end up going back. I don't know. Uh, maybe I won't. Maybe I will. But my dreams, I feel like that's what they are. They are mine. They are for me and not for anybody else. Yes. And actually, this is why I kind of like your story and I wanted to, um, I wanted you to say your story because it's a, like, first of all, I think you're very brave. Not, I feel like not everybody is willing to wake up and be like, okay, this is not what I want to do. Like, people tend to, well, I already started and might as well, I'm not going to waste all those years. And then they live unhappy or they have all these regrets. And for you to you actually say, you know what? No, I know I did all this, but this is not. And like your mom said, like, it's not too late to start over. Like, some people have their life, they already know what they want to do, and then they realize they don't. And that's what happened to you. You, like, no, and you were brave enough to take that step and take away, take yourself from that, from where you were, to feel like, okay, I'm going to pursue what I want to do. Like, I, this is not what makes me happy. I'm going to find what makes me happy. I don't know where I'm going to find it, when it's going to happen, but this is not it for now. And you... And you let that go. And actually, that's, to me, very inspiring. And that's very brave. Thank so, you. Yeah. I think you're brave for talking from the <laughs> camera. Like, it's not easy. It's tough. But that's why, like, I, like, it comes to my, like, it's, like, when I was talking about my first video, like, don't be afraid to, like, start all over, you know? At least you failed, but you did it knowing that, okay, I tried. I failed. Okay, what's next? I Always know, try. I, I, have, I don't know what is up with me. It's, like, part of me is, like, I'm afraid of, I don't know, life, or I don't know, take risks, take chances, but the other part is, like, you have to do this. Like, you're not, you're not going to get anywhere. And I still feel that pressure to be successful, in a sense, because let's go back to the whole immigration thing with the parents, that they come here looking for a better life, and so they, you know, you're supposed to be better than your parents. Mm -hmm. And so my parents, I feel like this had the bar high, okay? My parents are entrepreneurs. They own their restaurants. They own their businesses. So I feel like I've had to be higher than that. <laughs> I have to surpass that, you know, because that... That was the whole point of them coming here. Yeah. You know, I have to honor that. So I still feel that in a sense. I don't know if that's right or wrong, to be honest, feeling that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, of course. Yeah. They're going to, you're obviously, I feel like you're obviously going to be like better. I don't want to say better than your parents. Like, yeah, better in a sense that you're going to, they did what they can with, the, with what they, they had and you're going to do better because they gave you the Those resources and the opportunities for what you, so you're going to like, Natalie's going to succeed me. Her kids are going to succeed. I think that's what, we all want, in a sense, just for us to our kids for, to be better, in a sense, or yeah, just, but better. How what is better? But better, mean? but better also in a sense, like better, better financially. Or no, better? I think in me, I think better in a sense where they are happy for how they are living. But um, just you just never know. You know, one day you're gonna wait, like you're gonna find out what you want. But it's, so just fine. know that there's no time limit. Yeah, that's that's hard to to because I I get where you're coming from. Like the whole time limit thing, because I feel like. Time is it's 25. I'm 25. I feel like I should have some of my Girl. shit together. Feel <laughs> you like... feel like that? Me at my 21 years of age. <laughs> I feel like sometimes I, it's funny because I was just saying that too. Like, I'm going to be, you know, a certain age <laughs> and I feel like I don't have anything. Like, what am I doing with my life? You know, and stuff like that. But then it's like, okay, I have my YouTube and I like it. And, you know, and I'm like, maybe this could go somewhere to other things that I want to do. You know, it's something that I'm starting. And I feel okay. I think about it like that and how I'm feeling now. And I'm like, okay, I like doing this. I'm very happy right now with doing this. And what I'm doing. Trying to achieve. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what I'm trying to achieve. I mean, hopefully, I wish. Did I wish if I, I could have realized this uh, a few years back? Yes, but. No, I guess things happen for a reason, you know. I don't know. Everybody's life is just different. Are you going to be a model? <laughs> no. Do you yeah, have I, I don't know what I want to do. You know, well, okay, so let's just end it with, like, what are you doing now, in a sense? Me, I, right now, I'm finally starting to look for a job because after I decided to leave school, I was like, okay, well, I, I got to work. You know, like, well, I'm not, I'm not going to school. Like, I have to work. I have to make money then. Yeah. I have to do something. I, think about mo I thought about moving out to where my boyfriend was at the time. He was in Pittsburgh, and I was like, well, maybe I should just... Go to Pittsburgh, but for the past, I guess he, I graduated 2017, and the master's yeah, so like, oh my god, like four years ago. That's crazy. Wow, four years ago. That's I feel crazy. like you just. What do I have to show for it? Anyway, for the past, I guess almost four years, I've been in the restaurant business with my parents. 
and I am so ready to get out. So, so ready to leave that and find something else. What it is, I don't know. I am applying to jobs. So if you know somebody hiring, <laughs> hit her up and then she'll, like, you know, she'll put modeling, us in contact. Modeling business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're going to find it. One day you're going to wake up and you're going to find what it is that you want to do. Oh, you're gonna, you never know, it might ha happen tomorrow, the next day. Okay, so yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. This is just like a talk show. And thank you. I'm wanting to do a part two, you know, once I get it together. <laughs> and I have my Yes. And I, I was so like, this is what I went through, this is what happened, this is what I learned. Yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoy the video and you guys realize that nah, everyone walks a different journey. Um, it's not so, always a straight path. Yes, know? it's like, not always a straight path. Bags. Don't get discouraged to start all over. Don't dis don't get discouraged of failure. Um, Gifted I child <laughs> syndrome. I'm telling you, it's a thing. <laughs> I hope you guys realize. I learned a new thing today. I did not know that was a thing. I hope um, you guys, if you have it, whoever's watching, you're not alone. People have it. Okay. Um, if you guys like this video, please like, comment, subscribe. If ring you the bell. <laughs> ring the exactly ring. You see, she's doing my part for me. Bring I watched so bell. many YouTube videos, I know. I know how it goes, you know. Uh, maybe I should bring you along. Like, comment, <laughs> share, subscribe, ring the bell. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you, guys. Bye.